Uh, my name is Daniel and we're in Soho Cuts in Thrift Street. I have been at Cuts for 32 years. <laughs> Favourite products? Cuts clay, obviously. Uh, my clippers. I can't say. I can't say. We've done so many people have come through this shop. I wouldn't rate them in any particular order. I think they're all equal. We've done people from David Bowie to Goldie to, you know, we do everyone's here. We still do. We do half of Pulp's here still now. We've had, you know, Naomi Campbell in here. We've had, we've had everyone in Food Cuts over the years. They didn't tell me how lovely it would be actually and how much I'd enjoy it. I reckon 90s I really loved. I, like, I rate people like David Bowie, how they were able to reinvent themselves and change their hair and go from one extreme to the other. I think the mullet. I think the mullet keeps coming in and out. And I do like the Buddha, the Cuts Buddha, which I really love, which is something that came about with um, Stephen Brooks, myself, and a woman called Clementine, one of my clients, and we did the first Buddha, and it kind of rolled in from there. So I think the Buddha's a wicked haircut, but it's something we cuts, kind of. And the fin, which Peter did. Peter did the fin, which became really famous through Travis. He did it on the guy for the loosing of Travis, and once he did it on Travis, it became the biggest haircut ever. But then it got stolen by Hoxton, came the Hoxton fin, which is quite bizarre. Pete, right, you're a big part of it. Pete, I wanted to just get your your background on this place. Like, what is cuts? Is that the greatest hairdressers in the world ever? Who started um, the place off? A guy called James the Bond. It was James the Bond, right? Like, he started it, it as like, James Cuts. That's right. In Ken Market, and it was Cuts Barbers for Men and Women. Right. 1984. Wow. Um, I came summer of '85. Wow. And I, my first day on uh, the Saturday, and I came, and then Daniel showed up, and I remembered him from Vida Suit because he was a junior there when I was oh, training. Okay. And I was like, what? And he had just come over from France, it was all glam. And uh, there was no appointment system, nothing. It was a tenor and haircut. I'd never done Afro hair in my life, and my first client was a black guy. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> Did you know it? No, he came back. Oh, wow. Many times. Really? So I knew the theory. Wow. And I just gave it a go. You know what I mean? And uh, it, it must have been all right enough. It was very like kind of, you know, groundbreaking, making up new stuff, new style, wasn't it? So, where people just doing it. Yeah, own but I think thing. what we, the only reason we've survived is we've always had good haircuts. Right, right. If we hadn't have had good haircuts, there'd be no way our attitude would have made it through. Because we'd never done the frills. Right. It was always kind of raw. We were the first anti salon. Anti salon? Yeah. I don't know what that noise in the background is, it's George on the air, she's got some air dryer and racketing up and stupid, I don't know. Like I wasn't hot enough. No, 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 it sounds like someone's doing something. Carry <laughs> on. You got this. Oh my God, I can't believe you got that for me. I can't believe that is, I didn't know how old I was there. I reckon I was about 19, 20. Yeah. What is it? Uh, Scrutability, absolute. Yeah. Me and my leather droppers. Uh, but he can have a lot fully made up, looking very camp and doing some weird 80s dance. <laughs> but yeah, and I look so pretty in it. I'm trying to look at it, right to me how pretty. And I didn't realise how good I looked. And so when you, when you look back, yeah. they say beauty is wasted on the youth. <laughs> you only realise when you get older and then it's too late, it's gone. <laughs> Huge amount of. I just can't believe the amount of different hairstyles and different levels. It's that incredible. Continually coming through. And like space. what, like cuts really stood for back then. People would say like the good old days when yeah. cuts was out, when cuts was out, and refer back. And rightly so. But the fact that we've moved back Ooh. to Thrift Street, two doors down. New beginning, right? Yeah. And it's like it's almost like going home. Hats off for Daniel yeah, as well yeah. and Pete for like kind of keeping it going, yeah. keeping it going, keeping it going, and then bringing it home yeah. to our own shop with like shop front windows it's and a beautiful. wicked basement that yeah. they're renting out to do like really cool stuff down here. Yeah. We used to come in the 80s. I used to come in and party down here 30 years ago. <laughs> if I had children and kids, I was coming party. Where I'm standing now, 
This was a Maltese gambling illegal club. Upstairs the Venus sex shop. We go through the shop, down the side bit, and come downstairs to the club. How do you feel about the sort of regeneration of Soho? I mean, I don't it's know. Like, there's two ways of looking at it. I look right? at a vista sometimes. At yeah. the end of the street, there's nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> when I, get, I get concerned about it because it's bigger than us and it's all about conglomerates. But I remember when we first came, we were called the Young Turks. Yeah. I remember when we first moved in, we were like, you fucking look, you put the rents up, the young trendy kids coming down to Soho. We've been there for since like the 30s. Yeah. So we were once the Young Turks. Yeah, sure. And we put the rents up because we yeah. had the shops up, Soho Brasserie, America Retro, yeah. Cuts. And so the old Soho started changing. Nice. Another old school face. What's your name? Yeah, my name's Sia. <laughs> Sia. Yeah. How long have you been coming to cuts? And what's your thing? Oh, like nearly thirty years, actually. Seriously, thirty years? Yeah, I've known Daniel forever. Yeah, how would you describe cuts? I mean, it's been there. Well, it's really kind of funky, long. isn't it? And uh, all the history behind it, like the post-punk um, people that owned it before. That I know their names, but I don't really want to say nothing. But yeah, yeah, it's it's always been fashionable and funky and uh, invited that sort of customership, but. The thing is, as well, I would say they're very, very serious people that come here for their haircut. Right. People that you see on TV, like news readers and stuff. That's interesting. <laughs> serious news readers. It's been nothing but a style and beer vibes here at Cuts and so on. I'm going to go and have a proper drink now because you might have noticed my glass is empty. See you at the bar. <laughs> <laughs>